<laughs> getting technical against my own go. rules. Let's move right along. <laughs> okay. Iran now says it is willing to talk about its nuclear program. Is that a serious attempt at negotiation? Is it maybe a stalling tactic? Joining us now is Zudi Jassa. Zudi, welcome to the program. Always good to have you with us again, sir. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank do, you sir. do you think that Iran would actually negotiate away its nuclear program? Uh, at, the end, at the end of the day, I don't think so, Stuart. I think this is uh, buying them time, but it also buys us time. I think the last option, obviously, is the military option, but we don't want to take that off the table. I think as long as they know that the military option's on the table and it's not being taken off, that'll bring them to the negotiation table and allow us to at least try to delay and vet and figure out what their capacity really is. And it also allows us to look at containment. Remember, uh, what we have to focus on is containment of Iran, the Syria, what's happening in Syria, is proving to be a proxy war, and right now there's only been one side of that, which is Russian and Iranian armament arming the, the uh, uh, Assad regime, and we've sort of been okay. left out of that, and let today's just, hearings with McCain hopefully will uh, look at a different option Let me option just zero right in again on Iran. Okay, you say that um, they won't negotiate away their nuclear program. It's a buying, stalling tactic. Okay, let, let's suppose that sanctions really do bite, and the Iranian economy collapses. Uh, that's a possibility. Even if it does collapse... Will the Iranians get rid of their nuclear program? Well, right now, as you and I spoke uh, previously, the hardliners have, after the recent election last week, the hardliners are now controlling the legislature. So the, the ones in the position of power today will not. But if the Iranian economy collapses, Stuart, it becomes a game changer in Iran where the green uh, revolution will be able to start pushing for more popular uh, control, start to actually let the Arab Spring, now the Iranian Spring, take back what it, what it gained in 2009. And that's how you ultimately bring about regime change and bring back democracy to a society now that is just riddled with theocracy and autocracy and, and uh, uh, the hardliners basically have been in control. But, but, so but Zid, it's more of a long-term vision. But Zidi, yeah, uh, to that point, though, wouldn't that, couldn't that also backfire? Couldn't, uh, couldn't the, uh, the Mullahs and uh, Ahmadinejad say, listen, this is uh, the West. They've crippled our economy. Couldn't that actually play into their hands if their economy gets weaker? Well, the pathway will never be uh, clean. It'll be messy. But at the end of the day, if we have a long-term vision for what we want in the Middle East, which is to stop not only the external Cold War against the radicals that view the West as our enemy, but internally between Iran versus Saudi Arabia, Iran versus Turkey, and the Arab countries, we have to have a vision to where we ultimately will bring about regime change. Any other option to respond to what you just said would be appeasement, would be allowing them to feel that we are going to be a paper tiger, not really mean what we say or say what we mean, and then you sort of abandon containment and just sort of let them spread and hegemonize the Middle East through Syria and then Lebanon. Okay. So, you know, we, we can't, we have to pick which option is the least worrisome and a long-term option that stabilizes uh, and helps the Green Revolution take over. Maybe messy up front, but long-term, I think it's the only option. Dr. Zasser, yesterday you appeared at a rally in support, in support of the New York Police Department. The NYPD had been criticized for its program of surveillance of Muslims. We want to show our viewers what you said at that rally yesterday. Just roll the tape, please. We are not here to criticize the NYPD, but rather to thank them for doing a lot of the work that we as Muslims should be doing, which is monitoring extremism, following extremism, and helping counter the ideologies that create radicalization in our communities. I have to say, Dr. Jasser, that um, we've not, if I may express an opinion, we have not heard enough of this, quite frankly. And I think you probably agree with me. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, the, the NYPD has been taking a pummeling unfairly by the AP and the New York Times and a lot of the others that really use the Muslim issue as a partisan uh, a bickering back and forth. And I think what we saw yesterday was also a game changer domestically that these Islamist grievance groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations, Islamic State of North America, which are really part of the Muslim Brotherhood political network in the West, are really don't speak for all Muslims. America saw yesterday over 20 organizations represented in including women's rights organizations like the Alliance for Iranian Women and others, stand up and say, you know, yes, we're not, we, we want to protect our civil liberties. We're not saying the police should ever violate our civil liberties. But be fair. What they're doing is monitoring in the public spaces, monitoring organizations like the Muslim Student Association that have over 13 terrorists that have been identified and arrested, not to mention that we have a problem. And where you have over 80% of the terrorists coming from 1.5% of the population, if we stop complaining, and I'll tell you the most important message, Stuart, is that 
if the media exaggerates and, and makes it seem like Muslims are under siege, that actually serves to radicalize our community more. And the more Americans and Muslims can see Muslims defending our police forces very different from an autocracy like Iran or Syria and saying that they are the brave NYPD is working against radicals within our community that will de-radicalize Muslims and stop this messaging that America is against Islam and actually we are part of the solution and I think that was seen yesterday and had never been really covered as much as it was yesterday. Dr. Zudi Jassa, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for being with us again today, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Stuart. All right.